assalamu alaikum students so i promised you that i will be uh, explaining the solution of the spot speed example uh, in a video so here i am now so you can see in this example the example 10.1 from the textbook and they have given us spot speed data the data is divided into speed groups which you can see in the first column of the table here okay and the number of uh, vehicles in each uh, group are given in the second column and the speed groups you can see the low and the upper limits are mentioned so let us see what they want us uh, to do with this data so the first thing they want us to do is plot the frequency and cumulative frequency curves uh, for this data so then in that case i must find out the frequency and cumulative frequency for each speed group okay so uh, <clears throat> Uh, you can see that I have calculated the frequency and cumulative frequency for each group now. How did I do that? First of all, I needed to calculate the total number of values we have. So I took the summation of this entire column. Okay. And uh, the value which I got was 169. So in total, 169 values were observed in this data. Then for calculating the frequency, I took each number and then divided by the total 169 and then I converted it to percentage. Okay, so obviously 0 will remain 0 and 2.37 uh, was when I divided 4 with 169. Okay, so 4 divided by 169 then converted to percentage will give you 2.37 percent and so on and so forth. Okay, for cumulative frequency you need to add the values. So the first value is obviously 0, the second value is summation of these two, okay, and the third value is summation of the first three values, and so on and so forth. So this is how, we, how I calculated the cumulative frequency. Then they asked me to plot it, so I have done the plotting in the uh, next slide. So this is the plot for frequency distribution, so on the uh, x-axis you have the middle speed so for each uh, speed group I will find the middle speed I will show it to you in the next slide as well and then I have calculated the frequency for each group and that is plotted on the y-axis and as I mentioned in the class that you can see the points but these points are not directly joined rather a best fit line is plotted so I used Excel to plot, to, to plot this uh, best fit line and if you plot the data if you right click on the chart in Excel, it will give you the option to plot the trend line. So trend line basically the best fit curve and this is what I have done here. Okay. And this is the cumulative frequency distribution curve. So on the X axis, I have the upper speed limit, the maximum of each speed group. And on the Y axis, I have the cumulative frequency. Okay. The cumulative only can go up to 100%. And uh, in this case, I don't have a particular shape. So even uh, joining all the points will not do any harm. So this is uh, the frequency distribution curves. Now, uh, the second part of the question, they are asking to uh, extract some data from these curves. So asking for median, mode, pace, and the percentage of vehicles in the pace from the curves. Okay, so let us see how we can do that. Starting with the median, median is taken from the cumulative frequency curve. How do you do that? Median means middle value. Middle value meaning the value which has 50% uh, or which is in the 50 percentile range. So you go to the uh, uh, y-axis or cumulative frequency curve. You plot a line from 50% value. Okay. And then you continue this line towards the curve. And from the curve, you drop a perpendicular. And the perpendicular intersects the x-axis at the median value and in this case the median value is 42.5 okay so this is how you find out the median using the cumulative frequency curve then 
there are some other values like pace okay and mode uh, you can see the arrows here as well but i will explain how to get these values in the next slide okay so starting with the mode mode is the value which has the highest frequency the highest frequency so it will come the, from the frequency distribution curve so you can see the frequency distribution curve here and mode just uh, whatever distribution curve you have you go to the the top point of the curve now the top point means the point which has the highest frequency it's not the highest speed it has a, a speed which has the highest frequency so the the point on the curve which has the highest y value and then from this value you draw a perpendicular on the x axis and the point where this perpendicular intersects is your mode value okay so it's somewhere very close to uh, uh, 42 or 43 or something like that okay and then for the pace uh, for the pace you should have a box or a, a scale or something which has a length equal to 10 miles per hour on the x axis scale so uh, I have this box here, the blue box, okay, and the width of this blue box is exactly 10 miles per hour on the x-axis. Then I uh, put this box in the middle of the curve so that one edge of the box is touching one side of the curve and the other edge of the box is touching the other side of the curve. When I say one side and the other side of the curve, I mean one side of the peak and the other side of the peak, one side of the mode and the other side of the mode. So uh, you, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the points where the edge of the curve is touching uh, the box, these points are basically your values of the pace. So the difference between these two values will be exactly 10 miles per hour because as I said, uh, you are taking the uh, pace range and pace range is 10 miles per hour range. Okay. So you get the values from the x-axis and then from those values, Remember, you have to calculate how many drivers are driving within the pace range. So how do I do that? Then I take these values to the cumulative frequency curve, this curve. Okay, so now you start from the x-axis. then. So whatever value of pace you got, I think this is 37.5 and 47.5. Okay, from this curve, I got the value 37.5 and 47.5. So I, I locate these values on the x-axis here. I draw a line from both these values towards the cumulative frequency curve. And then uh, from the point where the line intersects the curve, I will drop a perpendicular on the y-axis. Okay, so you have uh, the, the percentile or the cumulative frequency for the lower pace value and the upper pace value. And then when you take the difference between these two values, you get the percentage of drivers who are driving within the pace range. Okay, and these are the values then. Okay, the value of the pace is 37.5 and 47.5. Okay, and the... Uh, upper value has a cumulative frequency or percentile of 78% and the lower value has a cumulative frequency or percentile of 22%. So you take the difference between them and you get a value of 56%. Okay, so 56% drivers were driving between 37.5 and 47.5 miles per hour. Okay, and I mentioned it earlier as well that if this percentage increases, that means more drivers are within the pace range, variation in the data is less. Okay, so uh, again a review, what does this uh, cumulative frequency mean? So 78% is the this value, the value for the upper pace limit. Okay, so 78% drivers are driving between 0 to 47.5 miles per hour. And 22% drivers in the same manner are driving between 0 to 37.5 miles per hour. So if you want the difference between them, the drivers who are driving between 37.5 and 47.5, you take the difference of the cumulative frequencies. Okay, the uh, the third thing which they need us to do is to find out the mean and standard deviation on this uh, from this data. So uh, for mean and standard deviation, I have these two equations. Okay, you can see the equation for mean is this one, and the equation for standard deviation is this one. Okay, so in this equation, in the mean equation, I need n into s. What is n? Number of values in each speed group. What is s? The uh, middle speed. So middle speed for each speed group is now inserted in the second column of the table. Okay, you can see it over here. So 15 and 20, the middle value 17.5 and so on. Number of values n are already given. 
So if you multiply these two columns, you get n into s. Then you take the summation. Summation of n into s is 7107.5. Then you divide by total number of values, which is 169. So the mean comes out to be 42.05 miles per hour for this data set. Now if you go to the standard deviation equation, I need n into s square for each group. And again, n and s means the number of vehicles in each group and uh, the middle speed of the group respectively. So I already have the two values. Now I will multiply column 3 with the square of column 2. <clears throat> and these are the results I am getting. And then you do the summation again. So this summation will go in the equation over here. Then I need n, capital N, which is the total number of values. I need x bar square. x bar is the mean. I already calculated the mean. Okay. So uh, then you can see 169 to 42.05 square. And then divide by n minus 1 total number of values minus 1 so this gives me uh, 8.16 miles per hour if I put all the values in this equation okay so this is how you calculate the standard deviation okay the next thing we need to calculate is uh, the confidence interval or confidence bound. Confidence bound or confidence interval means the same thing. Earlier we have used the terminology of confidence interval. In this question they are using the terminology of confidence bound. Okay, and uh, confidence bound around the true mean of the equation, or the true mean of the distribution of the speed with 95% confidence interval and with 99% confidence interval. Okay, like how much population we know, want to cover, that is the confidence interval. Now, the central limit theorem for normal distribution says that 95% confidence interval and 99.7% confidence interval for a normally distributed data can be calculated using these equations. In these equations, we need x bar, which is the mean. We already have that. And we need E as well. E is the standard error. And that can be calculated as uh, S upon root of n. What is S? The standard deviation. What is n? Number of values in the data set as already calculated in the uh, previous uh, uh, parts, the standard deviation, and, and we have number of values, 169 in the data set. So first of all, I will calculate E, and E, you can see over here, comes up to be 0 0.624. This is standard deviation, this is number of values in the data set. Then, 95 per square interval, x bar plus minus 1.96 E, so x bar is 42.05, 1.96 e, this is the e value, and this is the range of confidence bound or confidence interval with 95% of the data. And 99.7% confidence interval will be this, only difference will be 1.96 will be replaced by 3. Okay, and this is the range over here. The next thing is they want to conduct another study at the same location. So when you are doing it at the same location, then we assume that the characteristics of the driver, so the behavior of the driver is the same. So we can use the data from the previous study to suggest anything for a future study on the same location. Now for the future study, they are saying they want the tolerance level or the error to be within uh, plus minus 0.8 miles per hour and they want it with 95% constant interval. Okay, so uh, they want to know how many uh, values they should take for this study. So number of values are calculated for 95% confidence interval in this manner. If you want to do it for 99.7% confidence interval, only this constant will change. Instead of 3.84, you will have 9. But anyways, we are required to do it for 95% confidence interval. Now, S is a standard deviation. Now, although we are doing it for a future study, but as I said, this is the same location, so we can assume the same behavior of the data, meaning same standard deviation will apply here. And E is a tolerance level which is given as 0.8 miles per hour. So inserting these values, we get 394. So any future study which wants to, uh, you know, uh, which wants to ascertain an error of 0.8 miles per hour and they want to be confident about 95% of population, they should take at least 394 values. At least. There are minimum number of values. Okay, the last thing which they want us to do is find out the uh, if the data is normally distributed or not. So we plotted the frequency distribution curve and according to the best fit line, it was looking like a bell-shaped curve. Okay, but they don't trust us. So they want 
to perform a mathematical check. That mathematical mathematical check is known as uh, chi square, or some of you call it chi square, some of you call it chi square. Okay, but basically we have to uh, give them a mathematical proof. Okay, so I'm talking about this term, chi square or chi square or chi square. So we have to perform this test. So this this is basically another type of distribution. Okay, so to perform this test. I have to do some rearrangement of the data. The first thing is data should be uh, uh, ordered in a descending order. So the highest speed group will go at the top, the lowest one will go at the bottom. Okay. In the earlier data set, the data set which I used for plotting the distribution curves, I had one extra group at the start with zero values, one at the group extra group at the end with zero values. So if you have a group at the top, a group at the bottom with zero values, these groups will be eliminated for the chi-square test. Chi-square test does not need these groups. Okay, this is another thing which you do. Then the third thing is, now whatever groups are left, after eliminating the zero groups, whatever groups you are left with, from those groups, now remember the groups are in descending order. So from, from those remaining groups, you will put the upper speed limit of the first group, meaning the highest speed group, as infinity and the lowest limit as minus infinity. Upper limit infinity, lowest limit minus infinity. Okay, so the two extremes are infinity and minus infinity. Then number of values which are already given from the field, they remain as it is for each group. The first thing you do is you calculate a z value for each upper limit. Or z value for each upper limit. Now we need some conversion. Before I tell you how to do the conversion, Keep in mind that whatever you perform on infinity, it does not change the meaning of infinity. Infinity will remain as, as it is. So whatever you do, infinity is uh, as it is. Okay. So uh, you have then uh, infinity for the first group, the z value is also infinity without any change. Okay. Now for the second one, uh, for example, you had a value of 55. Now the equation for converting to z value is that x, you have x minus x bar, which we know is the mean, divided by the standard deviation, s. Okay, in some books they replace x bar with mu, okay, and s with sigma, meaning the same thing. Okay, so x minus x bar upon uh, uh, sigma or s, so x the value minus mean upon standard deviation. So for this data set, we already have calculated the mean and the standard deviation. So 55, if you want to convert 55, then it will be 55, okay, uh, minus the x bar, which is uh, what now x bar is 42.05. So I'll just put here 42.0 divide by sigma or the uh, s value standard deviation which is 8.8.56 okay so this should give you 1.59 this should give you 1.59556 okay and so on so each value will be converted using this so only this part will change mean s standard deviation will not change okay so you calculate all these uh, uh, values, okay? Then you go to the Z table, which I will show in the next slide, and you find out the cumulative probability for each Z value, okay? So you can see there are some positive values, some negative values, and I'll explain how to get this in the next slide. Okay, so these are cumulative probabilities. Then you calculate the probability for each group. Now from cumulative, I want the probability for each group. So for example, if you want the first value, it will be the difference of these two values, 1 and 0 0.9432. So it will give you 0 0.0568, their difference, 1 minus 0 0.9432. This will give you the first value, okay? Now if you want the second value, then it will be the difference of 0 0.9432 and 0 0.870, 0 0.8078, okay? 0 0.9432 minus 0 0.8078 will give you this value. Okay, so for each group, you take the difference of two consecutive values, you get the probability for the group. Okay, 
Now this probability should be multiplied by n. So all these values in this column, okay, they will be multiplied by n. What is n? Number of values in the group, 169. Sorry, not in the group, number of values in the data set. Number of values in the data set. So all values in this column should be multiplied by total number of values, 169. Okay. After multiplication, you will get the F value, the theoretical frequency. Okay, the F value. Okay. After you get the F value, there is a check which you need to perform. And the check is all F values should be at least 5. At least 5. Okay. Where the values are not 5, we merge the group. Okay, so you can see all values are 5 or more except this one. Okay, so this one should be merged with the next group. So you merge them together, the combined F value is this one. Okay, and since you have merged the F values, so the N value should also be merged. So the combined N value is this one. Okay, then for each group you will calculate the chi-square value. How to calculate the chi-square value? Chi-square value is very simple. N minus F square upon F. Okay, so if you want the chi-square value for the first group, it will be, so uh, N is 9 here and F is 9.59. Okay, so I have to do uh, 9 minus 9.59 divide by 9.59. Okay, so this should give you 0 0.037403, okay, and then you do it for each group, okay, and then you will find out the total chi-square value by taking the summation of this entire column, and this should come out to be 1.57, okay, so this is the total chi-square for the entire data set, and then we have the DF value as well, what is DF? Degree of freedom, so degree of freedom Basically, it tells you how much variation is left in the data set. And this is dependent upon the number of groups you have. Okay. So, initially, we had eight groups. These are eight groups. Then we merged two of them. So, we are, we are left with seven. Okay. So, if you want to remember it, the easiest way is to count how many F values you have uh, in the end. Or how many chi-square values you have in the end. So, we have seven, seven chi-square values. These are seven values which you have summed up to get the total chi-square. Okay, so we have seven groups. So degree of freedom will be seven minus three, and that is equal to four. Okay. Now before I move on to the explanation of what to do with the chi-square value, I want to uh, show uh, you how to how you will get the cumulative frequency for the z-value. Okay, so you already calculated the z-values, okay, in the previous table. So how to get the cumulative frequency for each uh, z-values? For example, your z-value is 1.57. Okay, now remember, for using this table, the z-values are rounded off to second decimal place. Okay, so let's say your z-value is 1.57. Okay, so you will take 1.5 out of 1.57. 1.5 will be taken from the first column. Okay. So that means you are looking for this value then. And the second decimal place will be taken from the top row. So 0 0.07. Now remember 1.57. So 1.5 is this one. And then 0 0.07 from here. So the cumulative frequency for 1.57 will be this value, 0.9418. Okay. Similarly, if you have a value, let's say 1.20. So 1.2 means here. Okay and zero second decimal place from this column. So 1.20, the cumulative frequency is 0.8849, okay? Now some values were negative, okay? Some values were negative. So for negative values, if you want to use this table, you forget about the negative value and find out the cumulative frequency, and then you do one minus that. So for example, 
you have a negative value of minus 0.32 for example minus 0.32 so you will take the cumulative frequency of 0 0.32 0 0.32 means 0.3 is here and 0 0.02 is here so the frequency is 0 0.6255 so the cumulative frequency for minus 0.32 Now you can see and check the current uh, correct notation from the previous lectures. Okay, I'm just trying to hurry up here. So 1 minus the probability of 0 0.32. Okay, so it will be 1 minus, remember we are getting 0.6255. Okay, so 1 minus point Okay, so whatever number you get will be will become the probability of minus point three two. Okay, so this is how you get the probability of a minus number. And and one more thing was there was uh, infinity the first z value was infinity so if you want the probability of any value which is higher than the values of z in the table okay then that has a probability of one okay because you're talking about cumulative probability so cumulative probability can go up to one and then it will remain there so any value which is higher than the values of the table the s cumulative probability is one okay now the last thing I need to uh, explain is what to do with the chi-square value and the degrees of freedom. Now remember after merging all the groups we are left with 7 groups and degrees of freedom is number of groups minus 3 so that is 4 okay so you have 4 degrees of freedom so degrees of freedom are located from the first column so here okay then my chi-square value was 1.57 the total chi-square value okay. So I go into this row and try to locate where is 1.57. Now 1.57 is between these two values, 1.06 and 1.92. Somewhere between them I have 1.57. The probability at 1.06 is 90%. The probability at 1.92 is 75%. Okay, so somewhere between them I have the probability of uh, my chi-square value 1.57. Now see, I should do interpolation between them, but I don't need to do any interpolation between them. Why? Because of the limit which I have set for the chi-square test. The limit is only 5%. 5%. Okay. So uh, even if you uh, do interpolation between 90% or 75%, there is no chance you are getting a value of less than 5%. So whatever value I get, it is more than the limit, 5%. So what should I do in that case? Uh, my conclusion will be that my chi-square value has a probability of a cumulative probability of more than 5%. Okay. Now what is the rule here? As I explained in the class, the rule is if the probability of chi-square value is 5% or more, then the data follows normal distribution. There is no significant difference between my data set and a normal distribution. So data follows normal distribution if the chi-square value is uh, having a probability of 5% or more, which is the case here. You uh, interpolate between 90% and 75%, in the end you will get a value of more than 5% for prob probability. Okay. Now remember, the rule is based upon the probability of chi-square, not the chi-square itself. So here the probability is more than 5%, so I would say that the data uh, follows normal distribution. So I hope you have understood uh, uh, this example and whatever I was trying to explain here.